So now we, I'm going to open, um, I'm going to go through a session of application. So how, how do you bring all this stuff together? And, and now we're in unit four. Now we're going to unit four. And um, how do you put it all together um, to actually solve a problem? And so I'm going to go through a number of problems now. I'll present them to you and you can discuss them with me and the rest of the crowd. Um, but I, I really would love some interaction. And if you have any ideas how to solve this problem, you're welcome to do that. And then, um, and then after the session, I will put my other camera on and then I will hopefully my robot will behave. I'm hoping. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so this is where you, you kind of get now we're at the end of M2. Okay. And I know we have gone through all the learning. We've presented all the learning and you will really need to do some practical work. And I know there's a couple of practical workshops happening. Um, but you need to, when you look at, a, at a, any robotics problem, you need to be able to look at the problem and say, okay, so what, what actually must I do? And then you divide it up into increments and then you test little bits of it. And then you, you make things work and then you put them together. So it is it's, actually spot on, Elmarie. You don't just put in a program and zoops and, and then it's done quickly, quickly, quickly. It's about actually understanding what you're doing. And um, this is not a hit and run thing. This is a lifelong learning thing. Once you've got one thing, then we tackle the other thing. And then we, and um, I almost want to say, if you if you totally understand robotics, come and play robotic soccer against me. Um, and then we'll test. Um, but it's really about understanding each of the little parts um, of the problem. All right. So, so when we did, when we did um, problem, um, solving, we analyze the problem. And I said, watch a video, and I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to do. Get some data, define what's the verb. Verbs are important. What must the robot do? Okay. And then it's also good just to chat and talk and, and make role plays and bit of, bit of drama. Okay. So here I've actually taken the words out here. So you can't really see what I'm what I'm doing. So in structure, is it passive or power attachments? Do we need that? Okay. Um, sensors. Do we need it? Are we understanding why do we need to attach it? All right. So, so when you when you're thinking, you're thinking attachments, gearing, uh, sensors. How do you use the sensor data? That's your structure. That's when you put your robot together. So you can build a, like a drive base, or you can build a Riley rover. That's your chassis. Okay. And then you have to decide. Okay. So. What am I going to put onto it? What do I need to add to it? Is it too big? Is it too small? All right. Okay. Then programming. What are the risks? I mean, must it be bigger or smaller? How, how are we going to program the flow control? Is it going to be linear, repetition, district? Okay. And then how do we need to include the sensor data? All right. So this is where we're going. You have to analyze the challenge specified. All right. So let's do the incremental approach. So we need to divide it into parts and you've got to be very careful, very sure what you're trying to achieve. Okay. And I cannot, I cannot um, highlight or emphasize the need for paper and pen and notepad and drawing and cookies and coloring. And you can't just think it up and hope that the rest of your team thinks the same. No. You've got to have paper, write it down. What are you going to do? Define what you're going to do. So this is the problem. Analyze it, draw it, and communicate with the rest of your team. We Robotics is not solo, all right? Robotics is never solo. That's why it's a team sport, okay? And then you obviously have got to consider improvement. And modification improvement doesn't make mean it's bad. It means that there's just an improvement. There's another way of doing it, okay? Um, yeah. It's a it's a mindset change, really, and you must be open to say, okay, let's try it. Okay, let's try. All right. So I've just got some examples here, and I just made some. This is a, a robot from the competition, the World Robot Olympiad in 2021. Okay, so just just look at the picture, and and you can already see. So it's got just it's just a little bit blurred, but here is a is a powder. There is a motor. If there's a motor, there must be a power attachment. It's lifting this arm. It's lifting these two loops. Awesome. All right. What do you see down here? And I always want to zoom into the picture. All right. Over here, can you see we've got we've got color sensors? Ha! That must be line follow. Right. 
you've, you've heard about you've heard about sensors in unit one and two so there is a gear there's a bevel gear isn't that amazing and it's got an axle and it's attached to a motor all right so each of these things just by looking you already have you can already say oh that's a power attachment that's a gearing there is line follow and there's two line follows so we can follow lines on both sides no no, no. all right um i know watching videos sometimes for kids is like why do we need to watch it but they can already interpret it they already have the vocabulary to do things all right um this is a really cool one this is the wro in 2010 and it's just like woo. Um, it was a different kind of competition, but this, this robot goes up and down, all right? So it's moving up and down the tower. So what do you see here? So here is a color sensor, all right? It's monitoring the color. So red is the top, so it can't go over red, otherwise it's going to go off the tower. Um, you must actually watch this video. The, the, mode, the wheels are inside because it's got to move up. It's got to roll up, so it's moving up. It's just rotation, okay? And it's going to follow the line here as well. So it's, it has got a, you can see the red shimmer there. That's where it follows the line as well. That's what it has to do, all right? And you'll see if you watch the video that this this arm here actually goes up and down. It, it drops ping pong balls. Um, it's a power attachment. So you know power attachment, you know sensors, you know navigation. This is just navigation in the vertical space. All right, excellent. Another one, uh, just look, just look, just look. It's got, yeah, there is a line follow. This is also 2014. There it's got a line follow, cool. So it's gonna follow a line. It's actually got another one over there to pick up the intersection, by the way. Then it's gotta travel over this thing so the chassis has been lifted. Can you see over here? There we go. There's that that document called the constructopedia okay and there's a chassis where the, the the brain is at the top and the and the motors are vertical why so that we can lift up because we've got to travel over this thing um you can't see it but i'm going to tell you is this here this thing here is a color sensor so it measures this color if this is blue i think the thing was if it's blue you've got to turn the whole thing around to make it red and if it comes over this, uh, these are these were called energy. I think these were called energy cells or something. Um, solar panels. They were called solar panels. This is a whole um, solar installation. And if, if it's black, then it um, needs to be replaced. Then you pick it up and you replace it with another one. So yeah. Oh, there it's deact turning all deactivated solar panels. That's what it was. All right. So so you know cut line follow. You know power attachments. You know color detection. Um, you've done Constructopedia, a different chassis that you need to build. All right. And this was a really interesting. But you learn a lot from watching uh, um, previous competition. Okay, this is one of my favorites. I think this is 2011. Um, this robot had to move up and down stairs. And initially, this was a hard-boiled egg, but we lost too many hard-boiled eggs, so we just stuck to ping pong balls. Um, but what it had to do, it was had to go up the stairs, and the stair doubled every every step up. But then it had to come down again. And so, if you watch the video, very different designs. Um, but the important thing here is, um, you'll see that some teams actually decided not to go all the way to the top because the risk was too high. So they did three steps and then came three steps down. But um, interesting to see the different designs of trying to get these robots. To go up and down the stairs but it's also another challenge all right okay so now you're going to answer me okay now we need somebody needs to ask or answer some questions i have a little baby robot and it's got this is a maze it's just a but with a touch sensor so anybody want to kind of explain what's going on here anybody if anybody has a suggestion Please feel free to either raise your hand or you can unmute. Is there anybody, Casper? Not yet, Dr. House. Um, I think, sorry, Afiki, let yes, yes. Yeah, I think this is a, a distance sensor which uh, senses whether there's an obstacle in front of it and then it will take 
um, it will choose a direction where an obstacle is furthest from the sensor. Okay, you've got the obstacle part, but this is not a uh, this is not an ultrasonic. Nearly right, whoever that was. Nearly right. Okay, um, maybe the, the touch a touch sensor then perhaps. Yes. Yes. Okay. Correct. That's yeah. So it. touch sensor when it bounces off the wall, it must then decide on the direction to take. It knows that it's, it's reached the end of the la it's reached the end of. Uh, of, of its journey to then obviously move to a different direction. There we go. There we go. Absolutely well done. Yes, actually. So if the touch sensor hits on the wall, um, it's going to stop, correct? Reverse a little bit and then turn and then go out and then turn another way. So uh, just for detail, and I don't think you can see it, there is actually a color sensor down here. So it, it, it's going to go around here until it hits the red line again, and then it knows it's out the, it's out of the maze. Well done. One of the constraints you'll have to worry about is that this touch sensor must be must be able to hit this wall. So if you put it too high, it's going to go over the wall. Um, you know, some of the things you, we need to tell our learners, others you need to let them figure it out. So if I Yes, maybe maybe that's an additional challenge. Don't tell them that the touch sensor must be higher, uh, too high, or too, it must actually be rather lower so that it can actually hit the wall. Well done. Well done for that one. All right, that was a good answer. Let's have a look at this one. Anybody want to guess what on earth, um, what on earth this is? Oh, this fun one. <laughs> it's very I'm easy, gonna actually. I'm yeah, going to make really... one of these. <laughs> yeah, no. But if anybody has an idea of how this one must be done, you can uh, unmute. I think we need to tile our floor in our science center with us. Yeah, the robots will have a ball. Ah, oh, yes, <laughs> I'll it. Yes. Um. Okay. I think what's throwing me out now is the different colors. Well, okay, it's a color sensor. Um, it goes and senses the color and it will then determine a, it will, it will, when it gets to that color, it, uh, I suppose it stops, it turns until it goes to the next color. So it's programmed to find a color, a particular color. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Well done. <laughs> yes, we also have another hand from Ozias, if you want to maybe. Okay. So maybe unmute and also uh, add something. Ah, there we go. Uh, okay. No, uh, the way the guy that was talking, I just want to say they the, they are going to sense are going into the color, so the robot uh -huh. will follow the color and then sense uh -huh. according to the color. That's it. Very good. Yeah. So if you if you get to yellow, you know you have to turn left. Yes. So if you start very good. So if you start here and you go uh, and you see, oh, here's yellow. What must I do? Yellow means I must turn left. So it goes zoops, and then it comes to a color. What's the color? Red. What is the what does the color red mean? It must turns and I must turn right. Okay. So then we go over here. And if I come to green, what does green mean? Green means I need to turn right. I turn right. If I come black, then I know I've got to turn left. Yeah. Amazing, hey? Yes. So but has we also have two hands again from one from Uzi. Awesome. I'm listening. Yeah, busy. If you want to maybe unmute. Ah, there we uh, go. Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Perfectly. Yes. Yeah, yes. I was going to say the type of a color determines the, the direction of the robots. I, I, I'm not sure, Correct. but that was keeping along yes. those lines. Yeah. That's perfect. Yes. yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's and you, you know you can you can do so much with really I mean this is just insulation tape the blue is just to guide um, you could probably add a, a, a criteria if you see blue you you need to stop immediately and reverse a little bit because um, then you're obviously lost but the blue is just there as a as kind of like to guide the rope but not actually because the robot is only following the color blocks all right the blue um, is a wall. Yeah, blue is the wall that you can't go through, but but robots can, you know. <laughs> um, but just on that, um, a couple of years ago, we had a competition. Uh, Kasper, I think you were at that competition. 
where you put the you make a maze in a box so you put the walls different level and then you put a lid on it all right and you put the robot in the one side of the box and then you time them to see how quickly the robot can come out of the maze and yes, the, it was very much uh, fun that one that was lots of fun i think i need to go and get that box again but it was it was really amazing um well excuse the pun <laughs> um but to to not know where your robot is and your robot having enough knowledge well programmed knowledge to get out of the maze i think we need to have a maze competition again <laughs> yes Dr. Heiss, and also that maze we change the maze every time if the learn if the learners started to figure out uh, a pattern so that they have yes. to go and they have to see um change their way of thinking also that's i remember that yes yeah, yes that was fun i think we need to have yeah, an we'll amazing have... weekend i think yeah. we do need to have an amazing weekend again awesome we have one more hand if you want maybe yes, unmute i'm listening them. hi oops is it? Oh no, it seems like it's a little bit of a microphone problem at the moment. Oh dear. Okay. We'll just bank that one. All right, Cosmo. Yeah, doctor. Yes. Okay. Cool. All right, let's look at this one. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a heads up. Up until now, we've been doing a white surface and then a black line follow. Okay. And this one changes it. This one says, it's a white line you need to follow and it's on a black surface. Okay, so the algorithm changes just a little bit. However, these are they are here, this, these are the curves. So the curves you need to go much slower around, but there's a nice at the back there, there's a straight and a straight. So you can go quite far there. Um, the, the challenge is this piece here, of course. Oops, sorry. Um, what I wanted to do is what are we going to do about this? obstacle in our way what do you think we can do there anybody any ideas well how are we going to go around this obstacle? we can't go through it it's not magic okay we have a hand doctor from us if you want to maybe unmute i'm listening and i think uh, we have to build a uh, on our robot we must have that thing that can grab the the obstacle and move it and then the robot can pass the okay that's that's one answer that's yeah. one available answer to have the, something but how are you going to detect, detect that something's in front of you how is the robot going to know that there's a great big rock in the road we will use anyway. the, the sensor which one Anybody want uh, to guess which sensor we need to use? Um, what do you call it? Okay. Because uh, that thing doesn't that does doesn't have a color. Doesn't it, it have a the color? The color sensor is down. The color sensor is down for the to follow the line. That, that's there. Yes. Or follow the line of white. Oh, oh okay. Then, okay. but if we program our robot where is it it can sense the the obstacle then have to move the obstacle and then go through. Okay, but you still haven't told me what's the sensor. Well, how do we know that there's a rock in the road? Anybody want to help? What is the name of the sensor that we can use to detect that there's a rock in the road? At the house, we have a from Rifuli. Uh, yes. What sensor do we need to detect that uh, rock in the room? I know. I, I think it's a touch sen sensor. Okay. The touch sensor we could also use. Any other op options? A touch sensor would work. Any other options? Hand. We also have a hand from Dorothy. Yes, Dorothy. Hi, Patricia. I'm just getting in. Uh, maybe I got in with my mic on. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. But what sensor do you need to detect something in front of your robot? Um, maybe light. 
No. Well, we have a hand from Rafilwe. Okay, Rafilwe. No. Anybody else? Uh, we have a hand from um, Sehofatsu. So. Sehofatsu, hi. What, say, what sensor are we going to use to detect this big, straight, big box in the road? Something that can send out a signal and receive a signal, and the distance that it covers is the distance of the obstacle. It's actually the time it takes for, it to, for the signal to return to the receiver. The doctor has... Any hands? Yes. Yeah, so what I would suggest, yeah, we don't have a hand now, but um, what, what I is can your answer, wait, wait, we have a hand from, um, is that if I'm not mistaken? Yes, yes, uh, you can unmute. Okay. No? Yeah, no, it seems like she has pro a little bit of a mic problem at the moment. Okay, you have a chance now, Casper. If you're wrong, we'll ask Elmarie. All right, so my answer would be we take an ultrasonic sensor in the front of the robot to detect if there's an object. Then after it detects the object, it must go and it must um, move accordingly to the object size. Correct. Excellent. Elmarie, have you got any other answer? No, I agree with Casper. You must agree with that's a good move there, Elmarie. Well done. Yes. Excellent. Yes. You will take an ultrasonic and I would I would have two color sensors down to follow the white line and then one ultrasonic in the front to find when you get to that. All right. Next one. Next next challenge. This is a um, a gear attachment and it is a um, a forklift, but now I need somebody to explain to me why on earth do we now put the brick up and the motor up vertically? Why would that be? And the wheels close to each other. Anybody want to give me an answer? Why do you think? Any hands, Casper? Yes, we have a hand from Almery. Oh, Elmarie, you, your chance. It's to keep the balance. So because the, it has to lift up, your robot needs to keep its balance and the wheels need to be close to each other, not to let it tip. So it's also on a, in a vertical position to allow a better movement. There we go. Well, very good answer, Elmarie. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. And so, so that is... This is now where there's another way that you right in the beginning when we did the chassis from a constructopedia, this was another model, a way of building it. But indeed, this is to gather and to maintain um, your center of gravity so that you don't topple if the load um, gets too heavy. That said, this is a really good example to say what, which weights can the robot lift until what weight and until it does a topple. And so that's also a nice science experiment, a physics experiment about center of gravity. Well done, team. Well done. Okay. Um, I did tell you about um, about that the, um, where you have the grabber, and I said we need a more rigid structure. So this is definitely it's a claw and lift mechanism. But can you see that, that the entire mechanism is between two rigid rectangular pieces? So it holds it in position. So that these gears, where am I here? So when this um, worm gear turns and it meshes over here, it's held into position. All right. And um, just for, for example and for extra, these rubbers that we put at the end here, that's for more grip. All right. When you want, want to lift something, you really got to hold it. And so you need some traction. And um, yeah. Um, I just noticed here on the things here, this first Lego League large attachments versus symbol attachments. That's also Mr. Hino, but that's also a good um, 
paper or a video to watch. Okay, last but not least is the, the dog gear. And I said um, it's an attachment. And so this is all explained. This gearing part is actually attached to your motor. All right. And you click your attachment on with a similar gearing mechanism. So you can attach things and take it off, attach things and take it off, attach things and take it off. And this is the dog gear. It clicks into there because there's six pins around here. So three pins are on the a mechanism and three, part, three pins are on your power attachment. And so when you click it in, then the rotations of that motor then impact the functioning of your power attachment. Okay. So I have then got a whole lot of videos for you to watch. There are all the lifts, all the, all the lifts, all the, the links. Um, and what you need to then think is, is there a sensor involved? Is, is does it matter? Do you need to do flow control? Do we need to repeat something? Is there a decision? Um, is there gearing in, uh, included? And is there any form of attachment? And obviously because we're in powered attachments, is there a powered attachment? All right. And so this is a good example. In your um, overview document, however, there are another four um, application activities, and, and I'm really keen to see who's going to tackle at least one of those. Or you have to tackle at least one, but um, from seven, eight, nine, or ten, they're the new challenges. All right. So we're back to review. All right. Let me just go back. So it's building, the programming, and then the problem, which you have to analyze. When you get to a like a first Lego League challenge table. Okay, and this is the two seasons ago. This is the Cargo Connect season. All right. There are a whole lot of missions, and you can see that your robot can only must start here in this in this base, and then it must travel. And so it has to travel there, has to travel there. But to travel from here to there is going to take the most time. Why? It's the diagonal of your table. It's going to take the most time. So to travel from here to there. You, for that distance, you, for the time that it takes out of your 150 seconds that you have, you've got to make sure that you that you get that number of points as well. Otherwise, it's not effective and efficient. So when you when you analyze uh, mission fields as well, you've got to break it down into the smallest, just like what we did now with all these videos. You need to break it down into the smallest and then start building it up. Okay. Again, you consider there's lots of missions. Each mission has a verb. And then you combine the missions for great efficiency. Okay. And then when you have got all your little pieces, you put it together into a strategy. And we're going to do strategies in M3. And that is going to be the um, next month. That's in May. That's on May's schedule. We're going to do um, strategies, planning strategies, identifying the missions, adding the estimated points, and then um, and then you run it and you test it and you run it and you test it. So each exactly what we did now with all these other examples and activities that we were doing. Okay. There's usually a scoring sheet for multiple missions. And so this is what the scoring thing looks like. You're not going to get all the points for everything. Neither do you have to do all the points for everything. You only need to do selected. And so usually I tell teams, choose what you like to do, choose what you think you can do, and then you score yourself. Okay. All right, so there are some really cool examples. I told you there is um, Mr. Hino. He does all the Cargo Connect missions with a very simple Riley Rover. There's, we use the gyro sensor. The gyro sensor is great. I started that right, I said it in mission in unit one, but you need to know what you're doing. And, um, and I want to also say that when you unpack missions, you need to keep it real. So as much as you're watching all these videos, you need to understand that teams that are scoring 680 points in 150 seconds have been doing it for a long time. Okay. So as much as you watch these robots for uh, and, and these videos for inspiration, you need to keep it real. And I, at this stage, I know most of you are starting out as, as coaches. Please keep it real. Please then stick to a little robot like a Riley Rover or a driving base and get the missions done properly and be inspired and, and get your get your 150, 200 points. Go for it. All right. Your team needs to have a reality check. What for you is success? For a team to chase 150 points, if that's your aim, then that's what you, but you must make sure that you have 150 points guaranteed. Okay. 
anything over that is, is a bargain, all right? And you keep every year, you keep moving the targets. And maybe one year you will get to a challenge where you score 680 points. But if you watch these teams, they are precise. They start at exactly the same place. They end at exactly the same place. When the robot comes in, they know exactly which mission they're going to do. They know exactly how they're going to swap over power attachments. They are coordinated and refined and synchronized. Okay, And that's what it is to be a great robotics team. It's something to aspire to, but it needs to be a reality check. We do not want to destroy our learners before they've even started. I would rather have a whole lot of uh, teams all on 200 points doing it well and being proud of what the team has achieved. Please, coaches, do not do the work for them. All right? Let the learners do their own work. You, you coach them but you don't do their work for them, all right? And keep them inspired, keep pushing them, and keep that they that they reach the experienced team. And that is all I want to say. But I just want to, whilst I'm here, I want to see whether the video will play. I know it was in the other PowerPoint presentation. All right. All right. So I'm going to oh, stop sharing now. Are we still there? There we go. Let me stop sharing. Are there any questions before we do some practicals? Anybody got anything to share? Anybody? So if no. anybody has a question, please feel free to raise your hand or unmute. No? No, not at the moment. Not at the moment. OK, so now I'm going to try and put this other camera in. All right, so you can see it's got um, these two. You can see the one is red. There we go. The one is red on the on the left hand side and the one is blue is on the right hand side. The one that's red is reflected light intensity. So that's what we're going to use to follow the line. Now. I'm going to share my screen again. And I'm going to show you this wonderful program that I've got. Let me have a look here, okay? There we go. All right. So, um, can you see my screen? Yes, Dr. Huss. Okay. So, so if you've got here, it says I'm connected. All right. I'm connected. And for the robot that is connected, it's got two color sensors. Port number two is at 74. All right. Which means it's probably close to white. And port number three has got a color six, which is probably white. And then it has, um, oh, those are two motors. So that's a motor A and D are media motors. And B and C are the wheels. Okay. So now, before I carry on, I just want to show you um, the, the motors are actually inside here. So this is where I said this is where there and you turn that there it'll probably turn did it turn yes um those are where you have dog gears that you attach the power attachments onto the front of the robot okay but let me show you how this is going to work so i've said here when the program starts motor b and c are the movement motors okay and then we're going to do a loop okay until until the color sensor in port number three sees the color black, all right, which implies that that one there is going to stop at this intersection over here. All right, so this is going to follow the line here on that edge there, and that one's going to make it stop. Um, that said, I haven't tested it, so now I'm going to just make sure. All right, so it says that if I see less than 50, which means I'm seeing black. If I'm seeing black, then the B side is going to kind of go off and the C is going to go on. So it means that the robot is going to zig towards its left. Otherwise, if it's white, it's going to zig towards its right. So then then the, the, the wheel on the right hand side is going to go 10 and the one on the left hand side is going to go 50. All right. So let us see where this is going to work. 
There we go. And it stopped. Did you all see that? Yay! All right, let's have a look. Take up my power set. Okay, so let's start it from here and just see. Okay, so let's just revisit that. So just watch the colors. Um, I'm assuming you can see it well. Yes, Dr. Chris. You can. Yes, right. for everybody else, if you want to move between the the screen and Dr. Chris's camera, just press on the camera or on the presentation and you can move between the two. Okay, are we good? All right, so here we're going to go again. I'm just, because I'm, I am, I've actually got the, ro the robot connected on Bluetooth, so here we're going to go. Okay. It will follow, 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 and it will stop. Okay. You can see there was a little bit of a, um, it didn't stop immediately. There was a bit of a slippage, but that's fine. As long as it stopped, that's cool by me. All right. Any questions on the line follow? Any questions on the line follow? If anybody has a question, please feel free to raise your hand. Okay, I'm going to take a chance and see where this robot's going to go around the corner. Let me have a look. Okay. See whether it's going to follow the line here all the way around the corner. I think it's going too fast to go around the corner, but let's just have a look. Oh, this is a WRO uh, mat from, I think, two years ago. All right, let's have a look here quickly. Okay, so here we're going to go and let's have a look if it'll go around the corner. I think I'm going too fast though. Did it stop? Uh, no, you know what? It picked up the line. Ugh, it stopped. It did what it had to do, hey? Yeah, it did what it needed to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, it did, uh, it, is a, it did answer the question. It is following the instructions that we gave it of it when is, you see the following, then you stop. Okay. Okay. So hang on a minute. Let me just. Okay, so now I'm going to test it where they'll come around the line. Let's have a look where it'll come from here. I'll move the camera now. Let's have a look where it'll follow the line there. Okay. It's got to follow. There's, oopsie, there's a line. Okay, let's have a look like that. All right. So it's going to have to come around the corner. I actually wanted to come around the corner. All right, let's have a look. Okay. Oh, my money's on this robot. Let's go. Okay. Uh, I'm going too fast. Okay. Let me just is it not because of the line is um, on the, the color sense is on the incorrect side? No. Because I'm, if not mistaken. Oh, uh, uh, yes. Casper, you're quite right. <laughs> So it's just we need to switch the sensors if you want to go on the other side, uh, if you want to do it on that side. OK, should we do that? OK, so let me just put it here. Now let's change this code. So now, we are, what are we going to follow it? Uh, no, no, that's going to be too complicated. Uh, so we've got to follow it on the right hand side. So then. So now we've got to follow the line on the right hand side. So all we're going to change is the three to a two and the two to a three. Then we can follow the line on the other side. Mm, no. And if, you, and if you run it now, I think it will work. And then these two, these two must change. No, it's not necessary to change them. Uh, okay, you want a bit? We can see. <laughs> because now you're following with this with this one. You need to follow on the right hand side. Mm. So if you're following on the right hand side, you've got to change the other two around. This must change to fifty. Okay. Yeah, the only reason why I say we don't have to change the motor speed 
is because of it's still going to be moving um, in the same direction. So and the only thing that we changed was the on the size that um, which it's uh, receiving its um, information from. That's the only thing that we changed. OK, let's have a look. Yeah. All right, it's doing it. It's stopping as it's supposed to. Yes, correct. OK, but I don't want it to stop. I wanted to go. Anybody want to help me? I don't want it to stop. I wanted to keep going. So you wanted to. OK. So anybody want to answer the question before I do? If anybody has a suggestion, please feel free to raise your hand or unmute. Ah, we have a hand. If you want to, uh, please unmute. Uh, just try putting the color sensor so that it can uh, it can sense the color to turn to turn the other direction. Okay. Other senses. So if I make it red, it'll never find red. Yeah. So it's, it mustn't find the, it mustn't find the color. At the moment, it's finding black, and as soon as it finds black, it's stopping. So, so if I make it find red, which I know it's never going to find, I put it like that. Let's have a look. I'm going to make it 40 as well, not so fast. All right, here we go. Oh, I think it saw a little bit of red because of the one area just past the, the white after the black line. There's a little bit of a red, uh, green red. Um, space so it's picking that up yeah. okay okay let's go back to the original code okay but dr Hurst, yeah. so what yeah, i would yeah, add so what i would add to this code to make it turn um now specifically if we start there if i wanted to turn um left i would add a code on say um and say to it move forward uh, move just one motor for one rotation to um so if i'm not mistaken on the right hand side or left hand side I, I can't see it from my side now but i'll just add a run motor clockwise for one rotation and after it senses the line a red so it repeats until mm. so just um do we have a timer so i'll now i'll what I will say is um, under, if you go to motors, on top. No, I don't want it to, I don't want it to, to put only one. I must turn, follow the line. Okay. So what I was, the, that's what, okay. So what I was suggesting is repeat until the color red is seen or as we are using the black line, say to it, it must follow. If it sees a black line, then it must turn and then again repeat the system, uh, repeat this function again. OK, so let's, we, see it's gonna let's see whether it's going to stop now. What are you seeing? Is it? Um, OK, so in theory, it must come all the way towards the. Is it turn here? Yeah. Let's see where it goes around the corner here. Yeah. OK, let's have a look. OK, this is my last attempt and then everybody else has to do it. OK, here we go. No. No, 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 no. Yes, yeah, because we changed the color to red yeah. the <laughs> indicator. So, ah. if we, so if we say to it, it must um, search for a black line and also because we are, because the line that we are following is not as on the same angle as the one that we followed previously, because in this one we have to turn right, and the previous one we had to turn left. So we also have to change the sensors. 
It's gonna go. No, it's getting lost. It's not going around the corner. Yeah, so Dr. Hose. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, we have to switch the um, the two sensors. We have to switch them back again. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's because we turned um, left in the previous corner, and on this one we wanted to turn right. So that's the reason why we have to switch the sensors again. I just wanted to follow the line. Oh, dirty. All right, this is the last attempt. How do you get a robot to follow a line around a 90 degree angle is the question. Anybody got any ideas? We have a hand from Almery. Your... Hi, Almery. The only way I can get it to turn 90 degrees is with your. <laughs> your. <laughs> you can't just make it follow a line. I didn't manage to get it to follow my line, but when I used your uh, J-A-W, however you pronounce it, it worked perfectly. Okay. Okay, then we must leave that as a challenge for everybody to, to solve. And that's part of the homework. I thought it would just follow the line. So, Dr. Hose, I am busy typing the answer. Oh, you are typing? Okay, share your screen, Casper. Share your screen. Yeah. Okay. Casper's now got an answer. Well, what I'm suggesting is that I'm thinking of is this mm -hmm. is the part that we have at the moment. If I'm mistaken, we also have the, where is it? The color intensity, correct? Uh, yes. RLI value. All right, so what I'm thinking of is that we say to it, um, we add this one here, the function for, then we set it to white, so it will move at the same as your code at the moment, but it's only the difference is going to be, uh, this one's still going to be three, and this one's going to be two, and now because and we wanted the, to... For the, line follow, for the line follow, it must be RLI value. Okay, so I'll change that one now. So what I'm going to suggest is that we do is mm -hmm. I'm going to create, I'm going to get one more um, repeat function. Okay. And Within that, oh wow, okay. Yes, and then the only thing I'm going to add extra, um, what I would suggest is this, Dr. Huss, here we go. And then mm -hmm. motor B or motor C, whichever direction we want to, um, it's a turn to. But then also, okay. so the only things that I would add for, uh, onto your code would be a repeat that I only say two times or so, and also with a function with a just turn, because if it turns, it will start to search for that line again. Yes. And then all you do then is to add it add the function within this one here and stop and exit my program. Okay. This is what I would yeah, so this is what I would suggest. Okay. So if you are if you are seeing if you're seeing black. Okay, let me change my program. Okay. And I need to add another Okay. Yes. We only have to add one motor and one repeat. Okay, so let me share my screen again. <laughs> okay. All right, so I need to add a whole repeat for this. Yes, so only a, a repeat uh, 10 times. Okay. 
And then all you just add is a motor inside of that area, inside that repeat. Okay. And then a single motor, um, and it's going to have to turn right, so it's going to have to be B. And the first repeat, that's the if one. Uh, no, it needs to be, yes, yes, correct there. And, and the only thing that uh, needs to be, yeah. it's only one thing that needs to be changed from that program. That's yep. a B. Nope, uh, that stop. It doesn't, it must be on the outside, not in the inside. Otherwise, it would stop the function um, from um, executing. Okay, but well, I've taken it out now. Thanks. Yes, it will work now. So let's All see. Right. Just, this is my now, suggestion, what I'm thinking of. Okay, this is Casper's idea, and we are going to go around the corner. Okay, I feel like I can break into song now, but anyway, let's have a look, and here we go. Okay. Okay, was well, that the wrong motor then? Uh, Dr. Goos, so maybe yeah. you tried, so what I'm suggesting, okay, so um, you did change the two sensors, correct? Let's see. Uh, reflected light intensities with the two. Okay, so make that one three and make the, um, the other one a two. But then we're not because following on the left-hand side. So yeah, it was just because, uh, if I'm mistaken, we changed it back after the, uh, the second time that we yes. changed it. Okay. Yes, we did. Okay, but then we can just change uh, motor B to motor C, and then we see what happens. Trial and error. No, B is, this is B. No, no, yeah, the, on the code. So if we, we can either do a clockwise or anti-clockwise. Mm. Okay. Now, <laughs> I'm going to play around with this. It's not working. And I don't know why. Just to prove to you that we um, we all need trial and error. Okay. All right. I'm going to try one more thing. I'm going to up the number of rotations. Okay. Uh, it was following the line so nicely. Uh, okay. All right, one more time. Can you see it? Yes, Doctor. Okay, here we go. No, it's taking too long to turn. I think so it did see something. I think yeah. I think it did see something on that side, so that's oh, that made it turn. Wait. Okay. Okay. So oh, I see it, Doctor Fuss. I see it. It's a. It's not supposed to be red. It's supposed to be uh, black. The color sensor is supposed to see a black line, not a red line. A black line. Yeah, because we were trying to, if we turn, so um, on the first color sensor, if you change it to black, I think it will work now, but then. Okay, last time. <laughs> last time. Okay, last time. Okay. Hey, do it. Oh, now it's going to find its own line. Yes, because every time, uh, so it is working, it's seeing the black line on the corner, then it turns, then the, um, then because of the turn, uh, the rotations is so big, it is turning too much, so it cannot go forward uh, as much. So the only thing that we need to change then after, after a while is the rotations, because when we do a corner, it's not going to be precise for every single uh, robot. It's going to be the same um, 
turning radius. For example, if a core free, you will have only 1.5 rotations where with another with an EV free will only have, I think, two rotations for turning. So it all depends on your. There's the last one. No, it's not turning enough. OK, I need to sit and figure this out. I promise you I will post the answer on the group. <laughs> OK, How's that? sounds good. I'll figure this out. I will figure this out. All right. Anybody got anything to add on that moment of truth where we reveal that we also don't have all the answers and that you really need to test everything? Are there any hands, any comments? Any? All right. I yes, see. Doctor, we are from Busy. Okay. Yes, Busy. We'll Yes, uh, what I've just learned now is, is the importance of getting your code right. Because I, I see that it's very important. The, the, I'm worried of the if-else statement. It was giving me trouble when I was doing uh, Python uh, language. I can see now why, why it was giving me troubles. But I've learned something that I must get my code correct. That's what I've, I've learned just now. Oh, well done. That's that's mission accomplished, Busi. Well done. Yes. Absolutely. And I don't know why it's not going around the corner. I think the robot is, um, as a customer was explaining, you need to be able to turn it on that very short space. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Don't you need to add a stop? So as you it uh, as you find a change in color, first stop and then turn. Could work. Okay, yeah. I'm willing to try that. And then it's the same as trying to put a clock. It's the same as when you want to turn at the stop at a robot. You cannot go at 100 kilometers per hour around the corner. One would think. One <laughs> would think. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to try it again. But I'm I'm opening for suggestions. Okay. And I will. Anybody got any other suggestions? Uh, now that the turn, it still goes too far before it stops, but I will work on that one. Okay. I will definitely work on that one. All right. So if there are no further questions, um, I really encourage you to get practical, to try, um, join one of the practical workshops, see in your area. Um, we are in Limpopo this weekend. Um, the, the venue has been changed from the University of, of Limpopo to the Mustek building. I'm now trying to think it was Mustek. Mustek. Yeah. But if anybody needs more information, please send us an email. Um, Neo, you have your hand up. I've just spotted you. Hi, dog. When will the practicals be? When will the practicals be held in Northwest? Oh, Northwest. Um, actually, interesting. We are busy planning a trip to Northwest um, for the National Science Week in August. We are doing, but we will send you our details as soon as possible. We are also visiting a school in Northwest. I think in May. And but we'll put all those details on as well. All right. OK, um, we are trying to build communities or, or of excellence. And so we I know there is the Pretoria um, hub is having some practical workshops this Saturday and that I'm aware of. And then um, the 6th of May, we are doing practical workshops in Swane. Yeah, and then in, but you'll see on this on the schedule that comes out for May there is we also going to have an event at our science center. So you're very welcome to join us for that as well in Florida in Johannesburg. All right. Okay. We will keep you posted. We will keep you posted. Okay, and I'm very inspired that Northwest is with us. By the way, we've been longing to have our North Northwest colleagues join us. And so it's good to have you on board. Thank you. Thank you, Naya. Um, Kasper, there's another Stop. hand. Yes, Doctor. There's another hand. 
Um, I think that. maybe unmute. Hello. Hi. I can Hi. Hear you. Sorry, I did not hear properly. When did you say you've been Johannesburg for practical? Johannesburg, oh. Florida. Apparently, I'm in Florida. We um, it'll be on the we're on the schedule. We're just busy finalizing the program for for May. Okay. 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 And you're on our mailing list. If you're on our mailing list, um, we'll probably send it out on Monday, next Monday. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. Cool. Looking forward to meeting you. Really. It's nice to see these names and coming back. And um, it'll be good to meet you. Yes. All right. Um, oh, wait, there's another hand. Wait, let me go here. Nao, I see your hand is up. Hi, Doc. Um, I sent an email regarding to be added in the Northwest Educators Group. I'm still not added. I sent maybe three emails. No, no, no. I know. I know. Um, we're working on it. We don't okay. have a Northwest group. We're busy creating it. Okay. So, so welcome and well done. We are busy creating it. Thank you. I don't want to miss the May schedule, so I want to be. Um, but are you on our mailing list? No, I, I've been sending emails, but I'm not part of the mailing list. Okay, and Zani will then add you to the mailing list. I just need to make sure that she she adds you to the mailing list. All right. Okay. I think I did. I did reply to your email. Yes, I remember. Yeah, you did. Yeah. So the I set email is where Anzani is, and if you have any. If you're not getting information, just send Anzani an email on the ICET email and she'll send you all the documentation. Okay, okay look, thank you. Excellent, well done. All right, I need to really thank you. I need to thank you for coming yesterday to uh, units one and two and for joining us for three and four. Um, this is about learning and it's about uh, trying and testing until you get it right. And when you get it right, it's like, Awesome. All right. And be confident and competent then to lead a team of robotics learners, and that'll be amazing. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you to my team. Thank you to Anzani. I think she's dropped off the call. But thank you to Casper and Elmery for helping out. Um, it's been a really good session, and hopefully we'll meet each other. Please make sure you get the mailing list. We do have a session next week, Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, with environmental sciences and robotics. It's a really fun session to attend and we'd love to have you join us then. Okay, so see you next Tuesday. Thank you, everybody. Okay, bye.